uh, TV. And now with that, with that out of the way, I think the introductions are all good and set in stone. You guys know what's going on. This is a Pokemon game. This is Pokemon Emerald, in fact. And I will start talking about politics. Uh, for to which end I have the Al Jazeera live update page open for uh, Israel, Palestine, and the situation in the Gaza Strip. Uh, yeah. Uh, what happened recently was, um, like, actually, and by recently, I mean literally last night. This happened while I was sleeping at, like, 3 in the morning. Um, the, the, uh, Hamas militants took advantage, I think, of the fact that it's, like, a, it's a Jewish holiday or something. And they launched a bunch of rockets into, uh, Israel. And they actually started invading, believe it or not, like, Hamas militants... In, in, like, pickup trucks and stuff rolled across the border. Uh, and they started, well, I mean, invading. It was a proper military invasion. With what few resources are available to a, uh, a, you know, Islamist terror organization that doesn't have the, uh, official support or, uh, resources of any, uh, nation state. As much as people like to say that Iran is involved, it's like, what is Iran gonna do? Um, but besi that's besides the point. What, what ended up happening is, well, a bunch of bad stuff. Let's, you know, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, some really bad shit happened. Um, and is happening currently. The, uh, there's all sorts of videos circulating around of the, uh, militants, uh, doing horrid things to civilians, uh, and stuff. Uh, and generally sort of do doing, doing the things you would expect a radical terror organization to partake in. You know, I, I think that's it's pretty much par for the course. Uh, but the, the part that worries me the most is that this is going to be used as pretext by Israel to effectively bomb the Gaza Strip into rubble and commit mass genocide against Palestinians, more so than they already have. And, uh, you know, to such a degree that that would be like, I don't know, previously unthinkable potentially, which is a uh, a horrifying prospect you know uh the for for a, quite a while now the israel-palestine conflict has been like um sort of simmering just below the surface things have been simmering and and all that and it, it seems like finally now the other shoe has dropped uh, and and, and uh, I'm kind of, in, on one level, I'm amazed that it took so long. But now I'm actually worried about what what has happened, or what is going to happen now that the other shoe has actually dropped. What do we have? What's going on? Human cost of Israeli assaults on Gaza. Yeah, there's been a lot of civilian casualties. Mostly the fault of Israel, but also, like, Hamas's hands are not clean either. And I don't think they care, because it's Hamas. Uh, Palestinians care. They care immensely because they are some such civilians. Uh, however, that's that's what all goes on, I guess. So I'm gonna uh, continue on with. Yeah, the, um, there's there's a uh, uh, civilian casualties happening in Palestine, which is uh, crazy. I mean, it's not it's not unthinkable from the perspective of what's been going on there historically. Uh, a lot of Israeli civilians have died, a lot of, uh, Palestinian civilians have died over time, but it seems like this, this is, um, inciting event. Medical sources in Gaza, oh, this is for just from today. Medical sources in Gaza say at least 198 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks launched after a Hamas offensive against Israel that killed at least 100. The group running the besieged enclave said its surprise large-scale operation was in response to the uh, desecration of Al-Aqsa Mosque and increased settler violence. That doesn't surprise me too much. Um, it's critical to mention that none of the horrible things that we have seen over the past several decades, ever since before my parents were even born in, in, uh, in Palestine at the hands of uh, Israel, would be happening if there was no Israel, if there was no settler colonial state there, uh, or if things had been resolved much more peaceably and uh, with, with more concessions from the Israeli government, it, were they only willing to, you know, swallow their pride and concede that, yes, Palestinians are, in fact, uh, people. Uh, and and uh, 
and whatnot. But as it stands, that's not the reality we live in. We live in the reality where Israel has been run more or less by, by, um, I would say by fascists, but really it's like, whoever's running Israel, they're always fascist on the question of, of uh, whether Palestinian people should have rights or not. So that's, you know, that's what's what, basically. Um, this is going to give Israel a pretext to complete the genocide that they started. The only thing that could stop Israel at this point, unfortunately, it seems like is, is, uh, the United States. The United States is basically the sole reason that Israel is the economic and military, um, foothold and powerhouse that it is in the Middle East. Um, and, uh, the... The U.S., I think, should be willing to use that leverage uh, over Israel to, to prevent them from uh, killing Palestinians uh, en masse. But uh, we haven't done that because strategic interests for both countries or something like that. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this situation, on uh, Israel-Palestine situation. Oh, what's this? Israeli politician says that the Israeli occupation is responsible for the death toll. Member of the Hadash party and the Israeli Knesset um, Ofer Kassif says, while the killing of civilians on both sides was condemnable, it was Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories and the actions of the Netanyahu-led government that was responsible for the deaths of Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, it is unbearable, but we are, what we are saying is the only way to prevent such crimes on both sides is to end the occupation. As long as the occupation goes, uh, it's an Arab party? Oh, okay, gotcha, thank you, uh, Padishah Emperor. Uh, also, welcome to chat. Uh, as long as the occupation goes, such terrible crimes will continue, and this government wants that, he says. Kassif also criticized the U.S. government, saying that if it had pressed Israel to move towards a polit uh, peaceful political solution and to end the occupation, events such as today's would not have happened. I don't know if I've ever agreed with a politician more uh, than, than this guy right here. Um, it is certainly the case. The, um, everything that he said, from the Israeli occupation being the primary source of all of the terrible things that have happened, whether it be from uh, preemptive action by Israel or reactive action from Hamas, which Hamas is horrible and highly condemnable in that respect. I don't condone anything that they're doing. Are you idiot? Uh, no. I will now continue. Uh, the resolution here cannot be, like, no resolution is going to be achieved here, uh, unless the, um, Palestinian uh, people exact some sort of concessions from the Israeli government with respect to land rights. Have you seen what happened? Yes, actually, I have. Uh, I watched it unfold. Uh, not live, but a few hours after the fact. I was asleep when this happened. Um, Hamas initiated this invasion. There is no question about that. You know, they killed Israeli civilians. However, this is going to be used as a pretext by Israel to basically level the Gaza Strip, where about 5 million I think civilians live. There's no innocent person in Gaza. Ah, uh, yes, genocide apologia. And now, you, my friend, are uh, going to be banned. Sorry. I do not allow genocide apologia in my chat. You can do a lot of things, but that is not one of them. Good riddance. Thanks for checking out the stream. However, the likes of you are not welcome here. Uh, anyways. The, uh... The situation is, uh, is, is... Very difficult. I, I outlined this, um... When I was reviewing the, uh... When I was reviewing the debate between Destiny and Lonerbox. Um, where I think Lonerbox came off as by far the more reasonable party there. Uh... You know, although obviously I don't think either of them could really have foreseen exactly the events that would transpire today, uh, or, or last night, or whatever the case may be. Um, the the Israeli government is not going to be willing to swallow their pride here and, and concede land from uh, settlement efforts back to the Palestinians. Uh, so really what's going what's probably going to happen is Israel is going to unless somebody in the international community steps up 
uh, and actually make some meaningful effort to stop them. They're going to bulldoze the Palestinians uh, and Hamas and basically accelerate the genocide that they've already been carrying out for the past uh, 70, almost 80 years. Uh, and uh, going to, it's going to be really ugly. It's going to get really ugly really quickly. As if it wasn't already, you know. Uh, of course, the counter to that is that the, you know, Israeli settlers in the region, as much as they are shitheads for participating and knowingly uh, taking advantage of the system that it lets them exploit Palestinians, those people are still civilians. Um, you know, the the they they should be not in Palestine, the, the people who specifically move there to settle, those are people that you could probably, from a policy-making perspective, you could probably be comfortable kicking out new settlers, people who just settled there, who moved out of a home they previously had. Uh, but for people who had been born there, or families who have kids that were born in the occupied territories and raised there, it's going to be a lot more difficult to uh, determine a course of action. Most likely what's going to have to happen uh, is there are going to have to be internationally sponsored housing projects or whatever, uh, and and uh, Israel is going to have to cede land to Palestine uh, in the occupied regions while still enabling people to live there and have Israeli uh, citizenship or whatever, and you know eliminate all the checkpoints. I think eliminating the checkpoints is a very, very obvious, very easy solution. Freedom of movement is one of the biggest and most egregious, egregious uh, and most flagrant violations of human rights that Israel has been committing against Palestine. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say on the issue right now. It's it's kind of an informed simplicity moment. Hamas is bad, Israel is bad, civilians are not bad. Although they might be bad, they do not deserve to die. Uh, the Israeli government deserves to be obliterated. Hamas deserves to be obliterated. Civilians do not deserve to be obliterated. And that's exactly what's happening, unfortunately. So the, the only resolution we can hope for uh, is is some gradualistic approach that eventually leads to no more Israeli government, no more Hamas. Uh, and step one of that is probably like international mediator coming in to simmer down this situation uh, and like sort of direct the two parties involved. Preferably it would be the United States doing this because of the amount of leverage that we have. It, Israel would probably only listen to us telling Israel you have to make land concessions by, you know, this deadline or whatever, um, or we will retract aid and impose sanctions. That way you get some actual headway started on uh, enfranchising uh, Palestinians in their own land, you know. Uh, Kaiser strike. Yeah, that's great. Of course, I'm just making more work for myself by adding segment after segment, but whatever. Um, now, I think, uh, since since you mentioned it, I have it as a uh, tag on my stream. This transpired while I was uh, sleeping. Some, some new developments in the uh, Israel-Palestine conflict, which, uh, as uh, that guy Akashi mentioned in chat, uh, the, uh, the Israeli government has declared a state of war. Uh, between itself and uh, Hamas, uh, which it seems like is, is um, well, I would say it seems similar to the state of, the, of affairs for the past 10 to 20 years, but really it is, a, it is an acceleration and like an escalation of things um, that now it's, as opposed to just being a conflict that's sort of simmering, uh, it is an outright war. Uh, to recap, you know, I was talking about this earlier. This happened while I was sleeping uh, Hamas took advantage of the fact that it is a Jewish holiday. Um, I don't know which one because I am not well versed on Judaism. Might be. Um, and launched a bunch of rockets into Israel. Uh, you could apply that term more or less loosely to the stuff that they fired. Some of them were proper rockets, you know, capable of doing a lot of damage, and some of them were more just like, I don't know, military grade bottle rockets. You know, it's, it's Hamas, so they don't exactly have the finest military tech available. Um, and, uh, it's, it's like disparate militant pockets and stuff like that. It's, it's very much, there's like a lopsided balance of power here. Uh, but anyways, they did, they did launch that attack from the Gaza Strip and then they started invading, uh, Israeli territory, started capturing a few settlements. Uh, and I think, let me actually, I'll revisit the, the, 
the Al Jazeera page. The state of things right now, it seems like there is fighting ongoing in 22 locations near Gaza, according to Al Jazeera. Uh, and, uh, wow, yeah, okay. 198 uh, Palestinians in, in uh, uh, Gazan bombardment, and then 232 is a more recent number, and then almost 1,700 Palestinian civilians wounded, and I remember seeing earlier that there are a lot of, uh, there were a lot of capturings as well. I think 100 Israeli civilians had been uh, captured, and then there were like, man, there were some pretty gruesome videos on social media going around of, of um, Hamas militants killing uh, Israeli civilians, which is uh, not good. It's really not good all around. Um, to give a brief recap of the history that like led up to this attack, because like obviously something this drastic does not occur in a vacuum. Yeah, what had basically been happening, like if you know, if we want to go all the way back to Israel, uh, I think the international community like really fumbled the ball. Um, it's it's fair, then it's not. Yeah, um, you know the the international community I think really fu uh, fumbled the ball. Uh, yeah when when uh, the state of israel was set up um you know on some level that's neither here nor there because I, I can't go back in time to 1947 and tell the un you're fucking stupid except israelis in your own country and don't create a state where one already exists um a lot of tensions were were uh, were created by the uh creation of israel what palestinians are doing right now is justified and yet still bad yeah you know there's there is definitely that uh that element um, you know, is Israel had, had launched, uh, invasion after invasion in, into, uh, Palestine and then also neighboring countries. There's been settler colonialism happening ever since Israel was, uh, was created. Um, and, and the government, you could fully hold at fault for all of this. And to a certain degree, you could hold the citizenry at fault as well, because there's some sort of, there's a, like a pre-selection bias. Um, but at the end of the day, civilians are still civilians. Um, and, uh. The, 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 the basic, you know, recap is just that this has been happening where there's been a dramatic imbalance of power with Israel having a disproportionate amount of military and economic force behind them with the support of the United States and a decent chunk of the Western world outside of that, but mostly the U.S. Uh, and um, I have a video clip about a squad of Israeli forces brutalizing a fucking kid. Yeah, there's all sorts of terrifying videos out there. Um, you know, I can't, I can't watch them on stream because of Twitch TOS and whatnot. Um, it seems like now we've, we're starting to see the other shoe is dropping. I've yet to see someone who talks about it. Well, I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm that person. You know, the, 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 there's a chart on, uh, in, on Al Jazeera. Let me, let me show it. There have been, it, you know, there's no denying Hamas has done horrible things. Hamas is not to be condoned, etc., etc. You know, we've heard this a million times. But look, if we're if we're talking about human cost here, it's very clear who who is the you know main purveyor of the horrors going on in the in the um, in the Gaza Strip in the West Bank. It is the government of Israel. You know, the the deaths of uh, Palestinians far outweigh the deaths of uh, Israelis. Um, this just goes back to 2008 to 2009. I'm sure that if if you were to extrapolate this data back to uh, some point in the 20th century, it would be an even more drastic picture. Um, and this is not sustainable in any sense of the word, right? Um, what I'm I'm going to talk a little bit about what should happen, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think will happen because there are two very different things, unfortunately. Um, right now, I think that the thing that we should be aiming for politically right now is a two-state solution. I think a one-state solution obviously is the ideal with a secular Palestine or Israel-Palestine um, and, you know, both groups having enfranchisement and rights because it's very clear that, like, even, like, with all the horrifying Israeli settler colonialism, whatever, um... Now there are a significant number of Israelis who have been born and raised in Israel, and it wouldn't be a good idea to simply try to kick those people out. But at the same time, this demands a massive amount of concessions from the Israeli government. It would require them to relinquish 
a lot of land to Palestine or to Palestinian communities and let people back in their homes. Right of return is a big fixture here, uh, and I support that. Uh, you know, especially you know for Palestinian families who you know were evicted from their homes, you know they should be allowed to to come back. Uh, and I think that's not negotiable. I think that has to happen. And then you know eventually through through like land concessions, housing development, uh, resettling and relocating people within Israel and Palestine. I don't support peace offerings anymore. I totally understand. And I, I, you are under no obligation to support those peace offerings. I think the burden, if any peace offering comes, the burden of that offering has to be on Israel at the very least. I think that the ball is in Israel's court, always has been, and they have, uh, they have, you know, tried to take it and go home every time. Um, and then, you know, What's taken by force can only be reclaimed by force. Yeah, unfortunately, it does seem like that is that is the case. And and um, the the most hopeful outcome for me is that that force can be achieved by way of maybe soft power, that like what the U.S. can do. That's uh, and I am aware that I'm being unrealistically optimistic. Right? There is a path out of this. It might look more or less good depending on who's in the driver's seat. But now let me talk a little bit about what I think will happen, right? I think I think that like this is this is the proverbial other shoe dropping, right? This you know Israel has has made it their project to sort of eradicate Palestinians as as an ethnic group, as a community, and whatnot. This is very clearly a project of uh, ethnic cleansing that is ongoing. Um, you want peace? Get the fuck out! I know Israel planted their. Uh, roots so deep that they literally have nowhere to go sure stay yeah you know for the for those people i think you know stay you know you 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 can stay and and whatnot but the yeah but the 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 crux of it is that palestinians have to be allowed back in their own homes um you know there, there's got to be some solution there and ultimately if things get ugly that falls to israel more than anybody um what i think will happen is that uh, Israel is going to attempt to con just continue this project of uh, ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, uh, and and now it seems that unfortunately they've they've found themselves some pretext to take it to the next level. There's no easy way to say this, but I don't know if the U.S. is actually going to intervene to try to stop this. I I'm you know I wish I could bring something better to the discussion than that, um, but. The, the United States throughout history has been unwilling to reign in Israel to, to really any meaningful extent, uh, in large part because of the strategic benefit um, that they that they present. Now, I hope I'm wrong on that. And if it were any administration reigning in Israel, it would probably be this one. You know, the, the Biden administration, as many criticisms as I do have of them, um, which are actually fewer uh, now than... Uh, a while ago us definitely will have a say yeah you know if the us says something then it basically what they say goes if they decide that like this is our red line then that red line gets enforced because the united states is the sole hegemonic power on on the world stage although i guess you could make some argument for uh another country is israel is the only ally in the middle east region that's right and that's exactly why israel kind of has to do what the united states says at the end of the day um because it's the the uh, the main thing that keeps Israel afloat and in as good a developmental spot as it is, is aid from the United States um, and the military allyship. Um, I don't know for sure that Israel would be destroyed if the United States were to pull out, but it would be it would be bad if they lose Israel. The U.S. will lose its influence. Yes, and that, you know that you're right. That does also work the the other way around, where if uh, if Israel pulls out of uh, or if the U.S. pulls out of Israel. Then you, the, they no longer have uh, an ally in the Middle East, except for I guess Turkey. But I mean, we've seen how that's been playing out recently. Turkey literally attacked U.S. forces in Syria, and resulting in the United States shooting down some Turkish drones. So, I would hardly consider Turkey an ally. Um, so, I think I think that the things are going to escalate before they get better, which is not good. The you know. The bad things we've seen are going to, to happen some more. 
until such time that uh, if you turn your back on Israel, you'd have the entire region as an ally. That actually might be true. That actually, <laughs> you might have a point there. I think I think what, what, what will end up happening is that the United States is going to, at some point, they're going to like give Israel a proverbial tap on the shoulder. I don't know how stern the U.S. is going to be. I'm not super well informed with respect to like international politics uh, in, in that region. I don't know exactly what the U.S.'s uh, mode of operation is. Um, but I, I, I think that it constitutes enough of a PR problem for the United States, which is a very crass way of putting it, but it's enough of a PR problem for the U.S. to want to get involved. Uh, but then why have some of the bad developed countries instead of a top tier country? That's true. And I think I think um, what the United States needs to realize, maybe not what they realize, because I don't think they do yet, is that the United States effectively can decide which country is going to be developed and which country isn't. Uh, if the United States is allies with a certain country, they can sort of lean on the United States for more favorable economic terms when they negotiate for loans or uh, rely on U.S. aid money from the United States directly. Uh, and, and there, there is like, there's a very real correlation between countries that are allied with developed powers and the, the, the course of development in those countries. Um, and, and, you know, long story short, if the United States were to ally with Iraq and were to ally with like Lebanon or some other countries in the Middle East, then those countries would start developing a lot faster and they would start to become well, they would start to look more like the countries that the United States would want to have as an ally. Um, so in, in some ways, this is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, you know, basically, the U.S. can take one of those bad developed countries and turn it into a top-tier country. Uh, you have the richest country in the world in that region. Uh, Saudi, Qatar, Emirates, you name it. Yeah, that's right. You know, the, the United States has um, historically it's, it's chosen some pretty uh, suspect allies, right? Um, I, and I, I, I vehemently disagree with the decision to have um, the Saudis and like Qatar and any of the OPEC countries really in the Middle East as, uh, as allies. There are better places that we could be getting our oil and we shouldn't be aligning ourselves with countries like that. It, you know, it's, it's um, like we, we all don't know the meme of the United States going in and doing a regime change. They hate us for our freedoms and all that. There's no reason that we can't do that to those horrifically despotic uh, countries and then just be allies with them. But, you know, for whatever reason, we leave them be. And it seems like the, the, the United States has a pattern of allying itself with some of the worst, uh, some of the worst actors out there. Um, I mean, there, there are some countries that we're allied with that aren't all out and out horrifying, but there's a lot that are, and that needs to change. This conflict could have ended years ago. I couldn't agree more. And I think it should, you know, there are several times where it seems like it really should have ended, right? Like, um, I remember uh, reviewing a debate, uh, this is up on my YouTube channel, uh, between Lonerbox and Destiny about the Israel-Palestine conflict. This, ha this was like a couple weeks ago that I did this. Um, and um, there, there were several opportunities, actually, uh, Lonerbox brought up. That there were peace negotiations at several points that actually looked like they might amount to something. But every time, they stopped just short, mostly because of the Israeli government. Uh, and by mostly, I mean almost entirely. Last war could have ended, if not for betrayal. Yeah. You know, there's the matter of the, the Palestinian Authority being really, you know, ineffectual and, and stuff like that. Uh, there's the matter of um, the Israeli government providing uh, money to... Uh, Hamas, the, the Israeli government actually funds Hamas because it provides them a convenient excuse to continue uh, settler colonialism under the guise of uh, controlling terrorism and whatever. Uh, yeah. Palestinian government is a shithole, to be honest. Yeah, and, and uh, I think Palestinians, you know, know that probably better than anybody. It's, uh, there is still, you know, there's technically, there are policy solutions, but, it, you know, every time these sorts of escalations happen, those solutions look less and less likely to take place. From uh, Palestinian or Pad Liberation Wars, I could. You know what? Let me look that up. Oh yes, no, yeah, okay, yeah. I've I've misunderstood what you're saying. Yeah, you're completely right. Um, th there could be some some lessons learned from past uh, liberation struggles from other countries and stuff. That's absolutely true. Um, 
Wars that happen in other countries. Yes, you're right. I don't know. I guess, you know, for, exa for example, Algeria versus France. Yes, that's right. Uh, I think, I think, um, I don't know, like, I would support, like, a Palestinian revolt or whatever, if one did happen. I, I don't think it would be the correct decision to support Hamas here, because, like, I don't think they're very representative of the best interests of Palestinians. It might be the case that a lot of Palestinians support them, but I don't think that they are a good um, representation of what Palestine should be. Uh, I think Palestine uh, could be taking cues, like you said, from uh, from Algeria and uh, trying to, to uh, I guess, even though they have been doing this, you know, gaining international support here is very important. Um, and, and you really, at times like these, you need to be in the ear of the United States, because the United States has, like, a lot of ability to do stuff about, um, the Israeli government, and I think that it, it also necessitates sort of building, if not support, at least sympathy in, in, uh, the Israeli population, which is a very tall order, because, I mean, there's that pre-selection of, like, you, you, you have, like, I think birthright citizenship in Israel if you're Jewish, Nah? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Look, whatever's happening, I would support a uh, Palestinian, like, militant liberation movement. Um, but I don't know how present the conditions are for that right now. I don't know if this is going to turn into that. They got their hands full with Ukraine. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The, the international community really, like, their main focus right now is uh, Ukraine, it seems. I see what you're saying. Um, honestly, it seems like this couldn't have come at a worse time, really. I don't, I, I, um, I guess there's not a whole lot more that I can add to the situation other than I don't, I don't fully know, uh, what's going to come of this. I, I just, you know, I guess I'll just maintain what I said when I was reviewing that debate. Even though it doesn't seem like it right now, one day there's not going to be an Israel-Palestine conflict anymore. It's just a matter of what that looks like, whether it's going to be, like, the bad ending or the, the less bad ending, the, like, the good ending. Uh, and I, I, I guess things don't, things look pretty bleak right now. Um, there are avenues of advancement. You know, I think the, the militancy of Palestinians is not to be discounted here, but um, Hamas is clearly not making matters better by killing civilians. Israel is not making matters better by existing and also killing civilians and also doing settler colonialism and also bombing civilians and also and also and also. Uh, downer. Either Palestine will go extinct or Israel heals to Palestinian demands and hands over the lands that they took. Yeah, those are basically the only two options, I think. You know, and, and like... Within those options, there's a range of, like, different universes where, like, oh, they do it in this way or this other way or the, this other different way or whatever. But, yeah, I think ultimately, like, Israel is not going to be satisfied unless they wipe out every Palestinian. And the conflict isn't going to be properly resolved unless lands are, like, extensive lands are given back to Palestine and people get right of return and the sort of settling of, uh, like the settler colonialism stuff uh stops uh you know and and uh whatever happens is going to be one of those two i think i'm going to cut my input there i think that's like that's about all i can really say about or take away from this uh this this uh, ongoing matter it's just you know it's just a lot it's a lot